air and online. This is I Radio News. Hello, this is I Radio Afternoon News. First, here are the headlines. Police in Wau, Western Baral Ghazal State, have detained a man and a woman after a three after a tree they were cutting fell on a pregnant mother and a child, killing both of them. And the Council of States have written to President Salfa Kirmayardi to remove the Governor of Unity State, Dr. Joseph Nguyen Montuil. And the Director General of the National Security Services, Service Internal Bureau says tribalism is the biggest enemy in the country that needs to be stopped if it is, not, if it is to benefit from the vast resources. These stories and more coming to you in this news bulletin with me, Lugana Mulai. And now, the news in detail. Police in Wau, Western Baral Ghazal State, have detained a man and a woman after a tree they were cutting fell on a pregnant mother and her child killing both. The incident occurred yesterday in a residential area in Wau town. According to the area acting police commissioner, Akon, Akon uh, Kong says a sergeant in the police had hired a man to cut down a tree in a compound when it fell on the woman and her daughter. Major General James Simon said 25 years old Sarah Achot was hit while trying to rescue uh, her four year old child from the falling tree, killing her and the child. Police Commissioner narrates to I Radio what happened. <laughs> Here, Musa is the short Pahina. Wa Gambe, a Jarzol, Isum Garang Aburi, Inundu Sajar of the Bezi Gumi, Yekta Sajarada, the Agras over the Amulbeo, Lakin in the Sajar Dogate, a suburb in Waga of Manzil Bitajeran, Wada Al Hadiz de Maktal, Wada Isima Sara, a short James, Omura the Council Shooting Center, who be Sarera, Omur Isima Asai James, Omura Arba Senawal, and a friend did it off of the Hadiza. Major General James Simon said the sergeant and her employee identified as Garang Abui have both been arrested. They are accused of negligence. <laughs> The Council of States have written to President Salfa Kirmayer did to remove the Governor of Unity State, Dr. Joseph Nguyen Manchuel. The Upper Nile, the Upper House have criticized the Governor for failing to curb series of deadly incidents of violence in the oil rich state since the beginning of this year. The letter signed by the speaker, Deng Deng Akon, an address to President Kir said it condemns the incidents of killing in Unity State. It reads, and I quote, The August House unanimously resolved that Honorable Governor failed to address the insecurity crisis in the state and its neighbors. It also recommends to His Excellency the President of the Republic removal of Honorable Joseph, Joseph Nguyen Montuel Wajang, and uh, who is the Governor of Unity State. On Monday, the lawmaker summoned Governor Montuil to answer questions over the summary killing of armed opposition officers in Mayom County early this month. The upper house then passed a vote of no confidence ag against Dr. Montuil and asked him to resign or be removed through a presidential decree for, for allegedly failing to curtail insecurity in the oil-rich state. He said the governor did not prevail over the incident of deadly violence, including atrocities in Lear County in April, killing in Mayom County, com killing of the Mayom County Commissioner, and the extrajudicial execution of armed military officers early this month. The Director General of the National Security Services Internal Bureau says tribalism is the biggest enemy in the country that needs to be stopped if it is to benefit from the vast resources. A call corps made the remarks during a visit yesterday of the security mechanisms of the 2018 peace deal to the officers in Gorom, about 30 miles west of the capital, Juba. He says South Sudan needs to change the narrative to be perceived as peaceful people in the region. According to him, the neighboring countries are wondering why the citizens 
turn against themselves, yet South Sudan is rich in resources. The national security boss, the national security boss, went on to call on this soon-to-be graduated, very important person, bodyguard of Sian tribalism in the army, and saying the vice has destroyed the country. He was speaking at the Gorom Training Center west of Juba on Tuesday. <laughs> The protection unit is a crucial force that will ensure the safety and and security of officials of the reconstituted transitional government of national unity who took office in February 2020. They are part of the 83,000 forces needed to form a unified army, national security and police services as agreed upon in the September 2018 revitalized peace agreement. Meanwhile, the inspector the Inspector General of Police has directed the Unified Forces to work on combating city crimes once they are graduated and deployed this month. General Majaka Ketch says the citizens are faced with criminal activities of the gang groups known as Niggas and Torontos, uh, Toronto Boys in Juba Town. This includes street snatching, pickpocketing, and group fights have in resulted into loss of lives and injuries. A catch statement comes days after security forces shot at some gangs at Konyo Konyo Market, mistakenly wounding Miss Deaf Africa Grace Kiden and her right on her right arm. Speaking during a visit of the security mechanism to the Gorom Training Center, General Akech said the peace forces, once graduated, will add to the security workforce. He called on them to help with the crime. <laughs> You are listening to iRadio News. The, minister, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation has confirmed that one of its diplomats was briefly interrogated over rape allegations in the U.S., Diplomat Charles Dixon Imene Oliha was assigned by Foreign Affairs Ministry at the Department of Mission in New York. Yesterday, the 46-year-old Oliha was arrested over the weekend following an alleged sexual assault in Upper Manhattan and released without charges due to his diplomatic immunity. In a statement issued yesterday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said, and I quote, the report from the permanent mission indicates that one of our diplomats was accused of rape by one of the locals in New York City. He was briefly interrogated by police. End of quote. The ministry stated the investigation is still ongoing and will soon have clear details of what has transpired in the incident. It added the ministry is paying keen attention to this report and will urgently take up appropriate measures to address the matter. Finally, before moving to stories making headlines in the region and the international scene, religious leaders in Upper Nile State are calling on the state and the national government to strengthen the rule of law to encourage the displaced person to return home. The call by the preachers followed a five-day conference in Kodok Town of Fashola, County, of Fashola County that aimed to promote peace and development. Sorry, I beg your pardon. The call by the preachers followed a five-day conference in Kodok Town of Fashola County that aimed to promote peace and development in the war revenge region. It also aimed to encourage peaceful resolution on intercommunal conflict between the Cholo community and their neighbors. 
In a joint press statement, the church leaders called on the Upper Nile State Government and the county commissioners to create and form community policy. They went further to appeal for mobilization of resources in to implement development projects, including agricultural activities in the area. Another call they made is, is the need to evacuate individuals occupying IDP houses to ensure their return, and that humanitarian organizations provide homeless returnees with shelters and other basic services. You are listening to I Radio News. Now to stories making headlines in the region and the international scene. Here is Helen Samuel. Thank you, Lugala Molai. In the international news, the Ethiopian government has blamed the Tigrayan forces for starting fresh fighting along the region's borders. The government's communications office says they have breached a humanitarian truce that has been in place since March. The statement comes after the Tigrayans accused the government of launching attacks on their southern positions from neighboring Amhara on Wednesday morning. The trading of accusations makes it clear that after months of a lull, the two sides are now engaged in active fighting. Elsewhere, the U.S. has agreed to return another installment of $23 million to Nigeria, part of money allegedly looted and stashed abroad by former Nigerian military ruler Sami Abacha. This is part of a deal sealed on Tuesday in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, between the two countries. Justice Minister Abu Bakar Malami signed on behalf of Nigeria, while the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mary Leonard, signed the agreement on behalf of the U.S. government. The U.S. had in 2020 returned more than $300 million to the West African country. And finally, international leaders have been expressing their solidarity with Ukraine today and repeating their support on Independence Day. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson says the nation will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes, adding that every possible humanitarian, economic and military support will be provided. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says the country's hearts are with Ukraine today as it celebrates its national holiday under terrible circumstances. He is joined by leaders from across Europe in wishing Ukraine a happy Independence Day, including the presidents of Finland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Moldova, and foreign ministers in Poland and Turkey. And that's all for now from the international arena. Back to you now, Lugala Molai. Thank you very much, Helen Samuel, for taking us through what is making headlines in the region and the international scene. Now to the world of sports. Here is my Jacob Felix. Good afternoon, Lugala Mulai. Salan FC Rumbek and Al Hilal FC Wow are most likely to play their cup games at Tanzania National Main Stadium due to the ongoing renovations at Juba National Stadium. Tanzania National Main Stadium, also known as Benjamin Mkapa Stadium, is a multi purpose stadium located in Miburani ward of Temeke district in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. It opened in 2007 and was built adjacent to Uhuru Stadium, the former national stadium. According to South Sudan Football Association, the two teams have chosen the stadium as their home ground for their cup game. As SFA said, they are waiting for the confirmation from Tanzania Federation. Salan FC Rumbek will play Tanzanian giant Young Africa FC in Cup Champions League, while Al Hilal FC will host Sansiba team Kipanga FC in Confederation Cup. Leicester City have rejected the third bid from Chelsea for Wesley Fofana, believed to be between 60 million euros and 70 million euros. It is understood the offer for the 21 year old centre back includes add ons clauses some of which are considered by Leicester to be unrealistic. But the Foxes, who are yet to win this season, have maintained their stance that the Frenchman is not for sale. And it could take a well-record fee for a defender, more than 80 million for City, to consider Chelsea's advances. The Blues have already spent about 170 million euros this summer and recently had a 40 million euro bid for Everton forward Anthony Gordon turned down. Thomas Tuchel's side are also in talks with Barcelona about signing former national striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. 
And finally, British number no. six Liam Brody renewed his bid to reach the US Open main draw for the first time with a comeback win in his opening qualifying match. Brody, 28, is seeded 25th in the qualifying tournament and won 3-6, 7-6, against American 20-year-old Mappy Cassoni on Tuesday. Left-hander Brody reached the third round of Wimbledon this year. Fellow Brighton J. Clark fell at the first hurdle, beaten 6-4, 6-4 by Slovakian 13th seed Norbert Gombos. End of the sports news and back to you Lugala Mulai in the studio. Thank you, Maya Jacob. You are listening to iRadio News. And to end this bulletin, here are the headlines once again. Police in Wau, Western Baral Ghazal, have detained a man and a woman after a tree they were cutting fell on a pregnant mother and a child killing both of them. The Council of States have written to President Salva Kiir Mayardi to remove the Governor of Unity State, Dr. Joseph Nguyen Montuil. And the Director General of the National Security Service Internal Bureau says tribalism is the biggest enemy the country that in the country and uh, that needs to stop and I beg your pardon. And the Director General of National Security Services Internal Bureau says tribalism is the biggest enemy in the country that needs to be stopped if it is to benefit from the vast resources. That is the end of iRadio Afternoon News. If you can you can get these stories and more and Upda more updates by subscribing to iRadio News Alert on your MTN South Sudan number. Call 700 or dial star 700 hash and follow the instructions. If there's a story or an event you can you would like iRadio to cover or report about, please send us a text message on plus 211-925-287-870. It's also our WhatsApp number. Follow us on Twitter at iRadio Juba. Like our Facebook page, iRadio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at iRadio South Sudan. You can also visit our website and listen to us online at www.iradio.org. Stay tuned for the news in Arabic at half past the hour. I've been Lugara Mulai. Thanks for listening. <laughs>